ready for Rihanna. So we're going to talk about her second album, which was called A Girl Like Me. Now really, when this record came out, it came out less than a year after her first album, Music of the Sun. Now when I compare these two albums, the difference between them is, is that one was a little bit more naive and, you know, more not looking to the stars and the future. This one, you can tell the effects of what's happened as far as your life is concerned, and it just feels that way. Some of these songs are a little bit, you know, dealing after the event more so than during or pre the event. And so it's still summertime music, but it just feels like if that was the start of the season, this is kind of the end of the season. Luckily, there are still songs on this release that are caught up in the moment and are real, you know, make you want to take your shirt off numbers. But the, the way that this album works is I really feel that it, 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 does R&B in a way that not necessarily is seen successfully very often. So usually when people start cranking out the ballads, it gets to the point where, you know, you, you're going to sleep just because you, you still, you know, you, you found them because of one club song and then you realize that there's nothing else like that on a 11, 12, or 15 song release. So Rihanna does give you more than one club number, but you also have to understand that there are, it kind of branches out like my fingers are as far as the, di the direction that the album goes in. So this is something to pay attention to. If you remember off of Music of the Sun, I said that I liked it, but I did not like the ballad type numbers. This time, you can kind of see some of the emotional things. I will talk more about it as we get to it. But understand that it's not just the old complaint. Club songs are good. Ballad songs aren't. There's actually a lot more to this album that's going to be seen. And all of the while, it still keeps things prolific. And, you know, in a rather watery, kind of heat, steamy environment. So... Can you smoke to this? I think the answer is yes, you can. I feel like SOS, We Ride, and A Girl Like Me are some good ones. And the production, really, there's some good stuff on here. I didn't really like too many of the reggae numbers. There was like three or four of them on here, and they all sound exactly the same. I feel like if I'm going to like reggae, it has to have an instrumental that really works. One of the reggae type songs that I really thoroughly enjoyed was If It's Lovin' That You Want Part 2. Now this is better than that first song. I'm, I'm thinking that the lyrics were the same as they were on that first one, but this one is clearly the better pick. I mean, just that hypnotizing instrumental on that song is too good to pass up that basically needed to happen Rihanna that was a very smart move and not that the old song was bad but also I'd say SOS break it off we ride these are all great ones now the unheard songs the thing about it is is that this release is rather mellow that's the thing about it is it is still pretty wild but it's also in con it it feels more it's just it's that's really hard to describe as to why it it's not as crazy this time and you know it it feels like Rihanna knows how to dance she can get a party started so seeing her not do this more often makes you wonder there's a lot more gushing 
on this release, and so we're going to talk about that. I like 7 out of 13 songs. So those 7 songs were S.O.S., Kisses Don't Lie, Unfaithful, We Ride, Break It Off, A Girl Like Me, and If It's Loving That You Want, Part 2. Now, to Break It Off, S.O.S. are the club hits. Those are, I think both of those were radio songs that you probably have heard. Unfaithful does the ballad thing, but it does it in that depressing, we're about to go through a breakup and change type attitude, but it works really well. If you just listen to it, it sounds to the point, you know, sometimes you, you want to, you know, you have that feeling and... This is good. This is an introduced attitude that I think, you know, folks are going to like. Even though this record is 10 years old, it still does that rather well. You know, sometimes you'll hear that type song and it just doesn't capture it perfectly. I'm guessing that this was a charting song. We Ride, that one's a real mellow one. That's one of the reasons why I said that this album was mellow, just because it feels kind of like an evening time song after you're done with your day. And A Girl Like Me is another one like that. And both of these, you know, Unfaithful, We Ride, A Girl Like Me, all of these records, it just feels like a lazy day. And it, it, Rihanna touches on something that makes you feel sad that things are changing. You know, this is something I feel like, uh, you know, albums from 10 years ago, 2005, 6, it feels like albums did this. Just that, you know, hey, it's not still summer, it's winter. Or, you know, those old days were two years ago. But I'd also say, if it's Loving That You Want is another club sounding song, so that would make three of them. And then, you know, the three mellow songs. But then there's actually a reggae type number that really works. This is one of those heaters. I feel like Kisses Don't Lie, if you give that one a shot a little bit better, that one's real ferocious. And I liked it extremely well. So, there was another song that was pretty close, A Million Miles Away. I was kind of liking the way that the beat was going on that, but I just didn't quite get to it enough. It's got a feel to it. That seems kind of depressed. It feels almost depressed in things. So, yeah, I mean, this is post-type attitude, I think, is going to resonate well, but it also feels like it was from yesterday. So, you know, if you're still in that mentality where you're ready for change, but you're also possibly sad about the change, this is an album for that. And even, it's it's really good. I mean, this record is good, but it here's two things about it. A, it's dated, and B, you know, not too many people are going to deal with the melodramatic way that this record kind of puts off. So Rihanna does have these feelings on here, but, I mean, you know, most people are going to go right to SOS and things. So it, it just varies. I mean, as the older a record gets, the less likely that it the feelings continue to pulse through your veins. So that's one thing to remember, but... Huh, I mean, it will give you feelings. That's one thing I will say is it'll give you the feelings that you need. So if you're feeling a little bit kind of maybe depressed somewhat, you know, that that was probably intended. But yeah, I do recommend this release. I'm going to give it a six and a half out of ten. So like 7 out of 13, so that's a little bit better. I was more impressed with this album, especially because I think I myself am improving. 
as far as listening to more than club songs on R&B records. So this was a self-improvement for me, and I like what Rihanna's doing. So I do like this just as much as Music of the Sun, maybe possibly a little bit more. So the, the future, Rihanna's been working on something, the social score... I will give it a 7, just because there were hits from this album, and you're going to have to take a look at them, because so I think that that's a good thing, and, you know, can it be topped? I think the answer is, is probably it could, you know, probably two more club hits, another couple of those dramatic, you know, make you feel numbers, and then possibly just a another cut like if it's loving that you want part two and this would have been rather classic so it just needed more of the songs that were good just different shades of that so subscribe for more fun i give this album a six and a half and a seven social